Oh guys, what a day, what a day. I actually filmed this yesterday and the audio kind of like crapped out. So sad. So, second take. It's Vivian, the Psalm Next Door. Today we're gonna cover Piedmont, Italy, which is one of Italy's most famous wine regions. If you heard of Barolos, Barbarescos, those are very, very famous Italian red wines. And you know, I love those wines, but I don't really always love the price tag. So today we're gonna go over alternative Barolos or Nebbiolo wines. All right, so what is Barolo? So it is not a grape. Neither is Barbaresco. The grape is called Nebbiolo. When you think of Nebbiolo, you automatically think of Piedmont because there's nowhere else in the world that makes it as successfully as Piedmont. Piedmont is in Northern Italy. It means foot of the mountains. So it is right below the Alps. The best area of Piedmont to grow grapes is the southeast region, which is called the Langa foothills. One of the famous cities inside Langa is the city of Alba, and it's a premier wine city, but it's also famous for white truffles. Yum. White truffles with like pasta, and then you have a Nebbiolo wine. Oh, so good. Piedmont or Piemonte, as the Italians would say, is very similar to Burgundy in respects to the fact that they use a single varietal, Nebbiolo, and they really care about terroir. So Nebbiolo, don't be fooled by the color. It might be a light color, but it is a full body wine. High acid, high tannins, perfect recipe for a wine that can age decades. The key aroma and flavors of a Nebbiolo are tar and roses. That's what they say, tar and roses. When I smell this, the first thing I got was like some black pepper and then this was aged in like some French oak, but definitely some violets, some roses. I got some strawberries, figs, a little bit of leatheriness. Definitely packs a punch. I might have to get some crackers because these wines are meant with food. For sure. These are bomb. I got these at Aldi. Big and black sesame crisps. So tasty. I opened this yesterday and I'm ashamed to say like I'm almost done with them. That's how good they are. And they're so good with this wine and a little bit of cheese. So tasty. All right, so Barolos. Let's get into Barolos. Barolo is yeah, the most famous. It's a DOCG, so like that's like the highest classification. They're just very powerful, they're beautiful, they're very, very tasty. And honestly, though, compared to a Burgundy, I feel like you can do pretty well with 50, like a $50 Barolo compared to like a $150 Burgundy. Anyway, so yeah, Barolos need to be aged for 38 months or three years. And then if it says Reserva on it, then it is five years. But I would say typically you'd want to drink these like at least five years old. I have two cents. I'm not, honestly, you can do what you want. So in Barolo, you split it up. Left is Central Valley, right is Sierra Lunga Valley. Left is a little bit more rounded in flavor, more elegant, I guess they would say, closer to like a Barbaresco, but still very strong. Right are known for very, very powerful Barolos. So this bottle that I have, very, very special to me because when I went wine tasting in Piedmont, one of the places that we went to was Soretto. And Soretto is one of those like OG producers. Brick Rocher is a vineyard and it's actually exclusively owned by Soretto. 
Brunate is a vineyard site. So the more specific it gets, the more expensive. Yeah, I've, I've had this for almost five years and it's like my little baby and I can't wait to open it next year. My birthday wine. I bought this probably for $60 and I think right now it probably goes for a hundred. So if you go next, like a, like a baby notch down, baby, baby notch down are Barbaresco's. So Barbaresco is also a DOCG and it's really like, you know, a stone throws away. Barbaresco's require less aging. So it'll be two years of aging just for a regular Barbaresco. And then if it says Reserva, like it does on this one, then it's four years. This one does not have a vineyard listed, which is why it is slightly cheaper. Um, Barbaresco is a are known for being a little bit more elegant, a little bit more mellow. Tannins are a little bit rounder, maybe a little bit more fragrant, and you get more of those floral notes. So that is a Barbaresco. Now let's get into the cheaper Barolos and where to find good quality, well-priced Nebbiolo wines. The First place that I went to, and that's what I'm drinking right now, is a Nebbiolo de Alba. It is known as the Baby Brolo. 100% Nebbiolo, and it is just where you want to find like very good quality value Nebbiolo wines. These wines are not going to be as tannic and as astringent as the Brolos in Barbarescos because they're meant to be drunk pretty young and like just a little bit more approachable. Like I was saying, Italians would probably never drink Barolos or Barbarescos on an everyday basis. They would drink Barbera, which is another grape that is native to that area. But there are more producers that are trying to make Nebbiolo more approachable. So here's a great example. Langa Nebbiolo is on the outskirts of the Langa foothills. Those are super, super hot right now. I feel like everyone's trying to get their hands on Langa Nebbiolo. I think one, because they think it's like a good deal. They're tasty, super fruity, fresh. And so you can find a lot of good ones for under $30. So Nebbiolo de Alba and Langa Nebbiolo are both DOC. So just like a slight step down. Then we go north, so outside of the Longa foothills. There's two other regions that produce good Nebbiolo wines, and it's Gatanara and Gemme. Those are both DOCG. Gatanara is at least 90% Nebbiolo. The wine is known for having a little bit more dry tobacco flavors like fresh red berries. So Gatanara is a great option. And Geme needs to be at least 85% Nebbiolo. Geme is a little bit more rustic in flavor. So you can find some pretty good ones around $20. So the, the factors that, you know, change your prices are definitely, you know, the, the reputation of your producer, the winemaking styles, um, the region, so how famous a region is. We kind of went through the lesser famous regions. And then the other last point that I want to make is vintage. So vintage is going to play a role in your price point because Nebbiolo it is very finicky. Did we get a lot of snow, which would mean there's gonna be more water for the grapes later? Was it too hot? Like all those factors matter and that will impact the grapes. So just like with Burgundy, vintage to some degree does matter. For instance, uh, like 2002, horrible year. Like, like <laughs> not even like a, ooh, we're at 89 and like, oh my God, there's eight in front of it. Like, no, no, this is like, low 80s. To be honest, who's buying a 2002 Brolo around here? I mean, in general, I think the area has had really strong vintages throughout the year, but they have been exceptional vintages. 2015 and 2016 have been marked as really good vintages. So if you like see those bottles, they're going to be a little more expensive. I would say 
go for a little bit other you know, lesser deemed vintages but like to be honest i feel like 89 versus 90 are you really gonna tell a difference are you and i really gonna tell a difference not really especially for like these like everyday drinking wines granted the one i'm drinking is a 2019 and 2019 apparently was pretty good not too shabby is this a little young Meh, maybe could this eight like you know just chill in the bottle a little longer yeah probably but I, you know better to open this bottle than to open this bottle right now am i right am i right so that's how vintage will play you know it's like if it, they have held the bottle longer for you it's gonna cost more you know so reservas are gonna cost more the older it is it's gonna cost more and so you know like a 2018 take it it's, it'll be fine well, that was Piedmont or Piedmonte and how I find Barolo alternatives. Please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to my channel. Let me know in the comments down below what else I should cover and cheers. I'll catch you guys later.